Next to hair transplants, rhinoplasty, or aesthetic surgery of the nose, is the most popular cosmetic procedure with men, and the leading procedure performed in this country on people 34 years old and younger. In fact, there are three distinct profiles of people who seek out rhinoplasties. The first are the teenagers, who prefer to begin adult life with confidence in their look. Next are young adults in their mid-thirties who have decided to treat themselves with something they've desired most of their lives. And finally, we have the over 50 crowd. These people may have had great looking noses their whole lives, but are living proof that the nose seems to change with time, and they wish to regain what they once had. When rhinoplasty was introduced, the trend was for the signature nose. Providing the ideal nose, however, proved a difficult task to reproduce over and over again. Through the years, plastic surgeons gained tremendous experience. Rather than placing some form of the ideal cookie-cutter nose on everyone's face, the trend now is to provide the proper nose in harmony with the individual patient's face. We're speaking today with Dr. Mark Mitchell-Jones. Dr. Jones is one of only 250 doctors in America, double board certified as both a plastic surgeon and as an otolaryngologist, commonly known as an ear, nose, and throat specialist. Dr. Jones has nearly 20 years performing aesthetic surgery of the nose and joins us as our guest medical expert. Doctor, with your extensive background in both disciplines, uh, who is better suited to perform rhinoplasty, an otolaryngologist or a plastic surgeon? surgeon? Pat, uh, sometimes either or both. Um, let me explain. A little bit, the otolaryngologist specializes in the inside of the nose. So concentrate uh, in training programs on breathing. You change the septum, the turbinates, the sinuses. This is their forte. This is what we work on first when we do this sort of training. The plastic surgeon um, in contrast is more concerned about the outside of the nose or the shape and the looks and the aesthetics. I guess if you had to pick one to do who's had both trainings, that's probably the best. Um, and fortunately, I myself enjoyed doing both of these kind of practices and do a lot of noses because I've been um, trained in both settings. Okay. What are some of the important issues that someone should consider if they're thinking about having rhinoplasty? One needs to uh, th think about the inside of the nose, the problems that you might have that are functional, and the form of the nose, which is the outside of the nose. You also need to think about why you're doing this. In many cases, I have, many cases, I have patients who come who would not do it if they could not do both. That is, if they weren't having a breathing problem, they wouldn't fix the outside. Or if they're, uh, other times, that they have a minor breathing problem, but the outside is a major problem. Uh, or it could be independently. It can be just a breathing problem, or it can be just the cosmetic a external aspect. There's a quotation um, that I would like to say, a good-looking nose usually works well, and you don't have to settle for one or the other. You can have both. Okay. Paul Margulies has recently had aesthetic surgery of the nose and is here to tell us of his experience with the procedure. Welcome to the show, Paul. Glad to be here. Thank you. Now tell us, what were your reasons for having rhinoplasty performed? Well, I used to be a collegiate wrestler and for 15, 20 years, I wasn't able to breathe. Um, so I believe the main reason why I did it was to breathe and be a little bit more better looking. I had a little bit of a ball at the end of my nose, so 10% was probably for cosmetic reasons. But the, the most important thing, I just couldn't breathe. Was to breathe. Now some of that footage that we just saw was actually of your surgery being performed, and that was only shot about a month ago, and I would never assume that you had rhinoplasty done. How was your recovery? What was really incredible is years ago they used to put cotton in your nose after the surgery. Now what they do is put magnets in your nose. Two days after the surgery, they pulled the magnets out, and Dr. Jones says, well, breathe. Well, it was incredible. It was the first time in about 15 years that I was able to feel air going up through my nose, and being able to breathe was just incredible. Now, you live in northern New Jersey. What made you go all the way to Atlanta to get a procedure done? Well, I read about Dr. Jones in a medical journal. Uh, I did some research on him. Uh, and once I met him, I just felt very comfortable, and uh, his credentials were incredible. And I, some of the best doctors are in New York City, and I could have went anywhere in the country. And again, once I met Dr. Jones, I just felt really comfortable about uh, getting the surgery done. Now you've, and, already, you've already told us that you can breathe 
terrific. What other things are you happy about with your results? Um, well, as I told you, some of it was cosmetic, and I had a ball at the end of my nose, and uh, I was a little uncomfortable with that. And now you don't see the ball, do you? No. How do I look? All right. <laughs> it looks good to me. <laughs> now, what do you offer patients as far as post-operative care goes? Uh, again, the education in the beginning, so that they know what to do afterwards, is probably the most important. Uh, Packing the nose is taboo. I don't like to do that. It's the most horrible experience you'll ever have if someone packs your nose and then has to take out the packing. I now suture the septum back and forth, which would work in 98% of the cases, but I like to be super safe. So in addition to that, I use these little soft plastic with magnets embedded that we leave in overnight. Uh, I also put on, if we change the outside of the nose, a little plastic splint over the bridge of the nose that's about yay long. And that protects it from um, uh, knocking it until the bones firm up enough, which is about five to seven days. What would you say is the biggest misconception that people have about rhinoplasty? Uh, that it's going to be a too radical a change and indeed that used to be the problem uh, before doctors were very good and understood the nose we used to do as surgeons we used to do cookie cutter noses that is the same nose for everybody and of course your nose wouldn't fit my nose um, I don't know why that lasted as long as it did but now we customize the nose we make it to fit your face both inside and outside but particularly on the outside where people are concerned with it if you have a, a round face wide face then you need a little bit wider nose it just common sense in a way right well Paul thank you for joining us today thank you Pat when we come back we'll examine no visible scar breast augmentation and hear from a young woman who's had the procedure performed she shares her experience and what was important to her in finding the right diet